Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. As you can tell by the title of this video, today I'm going to be telling you all about my life as an adult living with major depressive disorder. Earlier this week I released a video telling you all about my life growing up with major depressive disorder, how it affected my childhood, and how my experience was living with this disorder as a child all the way through adolescence. Today, I'm going to be telling you about my specific experience as an adult with major depressive disorder and the steps I've taken to try to better myself and to live better with this disorder. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, I love having you here. You may wanna go back and watch not only the video where I talked about growing up with depression, but I also posted two videos about major depressive disorder in general, where I explained what this mental illness is and how it affects people. So you may wanna go back and watch those videos before you watch this one, but hey, it's up to you. My name is Devin. This is my pillow with my name on it because I am clearly a child and I like him to hang out right here. And I make videos all about mental health and chronic illness. Once I hit adulthood, I had been dealing with depression for a really long time at that point. My mom believes I had my first major depressive episode when I was four. So once I became an adult, I could have been dealing with it for 14 years already. However, I really started dealing with depression really badly when I was in middle school and it didn't really let up at all. I had a year in high school that was okay, but since then I've been dealing with depression really ever since. I did try to go and get some professional help when I was in high school, but it didn't last long. I only went a few times and then my mom stopped taking me. So by the time I became an adult, I had been dealing with untreated mental illness for the vast majority of my life. I know adulthood technically starts at 18, but I didn't really do anything for my mental health until I was in my early 20s. So that's mostly where the story is going to start. But even when I was 18, 19, 20, those earlier years in my adulthood, I was dealing with very, very strong feelings of guilt, worthlessness, sadness, emptiness. I had a lot of thoughts of ending everything. I was actively harming myself for the vast majority of those years. I was able to stop once I turned 18, I believe, or somewhere around there. Since then, I've had a few relapses but overall, I've been self-harm free since I was about 18, 19 years old. So that I am proud of, but I was still dealing with urges when I wasn't actively doing it. In my early 20s, I had also just gotten out of a long-term abusive relationship, which is something I will get into very soon. Don't worry, there will be a whole video on that. So I was struggling. I was dealing with all of these depression symptoms. I just got out of an abusive relationship. My mom was still drinking and we were still having struggles there. And somehow Jake came into my life and I will be forever, forever, forever grateful for him. A few months into us being together, he started pushing me to go to therapy. And I didn't want to go. I was terrified, which I think is a little hypocritical because at that point I was getting my degree in psychology to be a future therapist. I have known that I wanted to be a therapist ever since I was 13 years old. So I really don't know why I was so scared. No, that's not true. I know why I was scared. I was scared because I had such a horrible experience previously and I stopped randomly going to therapy before and it wasn't helping me. My therapist told me to stop coming in. The idea of going to therapy again was stressful and I pushed back, but my mental health kept getting worse. I was having flashbacks from my relationship. I was having issues with my mom. I was dealing with my own depression. And it got really, really bad, really bad, to the point where Jake was like, go, you need to go. And I finally said, okay. So I went and I got a therapist and I got a psychiatrist. They were in the same practice. And I went there for a little while, but that therapist was not, was not a good fit for me. I think we got a little, we probably got a little work done. I'm not gonna say that all of my time there was completely worthless or anything like that. And the medications definitely helped. At that point, I was again put on antidepressants and antidepressants only. They actually put me back on Prozac because it was what I was on before. And I just 
I kept going to therapy and I was doing what I thought I was supposed to be doing until one day everything in my mind just shattered and I told Jake he needed to take me to the hospital. Now I've told the entire story of checking myself into the mental hospital for suicidal thoughts before. I will leave the link in the description down below, but if it's not there, check my channel. I promise it'll be there. It's also in my playlist called Psychiatric Hospitalization, and I know that link is down below. So I went to the hospital, and when I went to the hospital, they changed my meds, and they put me on a few different medications. They put me on a different antidepressant, they put me on a medication to help me sleep, and they put me on a medication to help with my anxiety. The depression and the anxiety meds I'm still on, I only took the medication to help me sleep for a few weeks after I got out of the hospital. But in the hospital, they changed my meds and got those stabilized, and I really think that that was what the hospital was for. A lot of people are thinking this hospital is for therapy or that you go in and you work on yourself and maybe at more long-term places it is. But at the short-term hospital I was at, it was really go in, figure out your meds, get your meds stabilized, and then we're gone. Sadie, say hi. So I was in the hospital for about a week and a half. They got my meds stabilized and then I got to go to what they call a partial hospitalization program, which is essentially you are at the hospital from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. It is an entire day. Honestly, it may have started earlier, I can't remember. They came and picked me up, they dropped me off, which was great because the hospital was 45 minutes away and I was not making that drive. So they do everything they can to help, but you go there and you do group counseling, essentially all day, and you learn coping skills and you learn safety planning and you do a lot of work. And I think that was really helpful for me to kind of acclimate again back to the real world after going into that hospitalization setting. And I was in that program for about two weeks. And then after that, I went back to my therapist. And she was not happy. I mean, I didn't really like her to begin with. I only saw her a few times after I got out of the hospital. Because not long after I got out of the hospital, I had a psychotic episode and she essentially brushed the entire thing off and was like, well, maybe you were just a little paranoid, but that happens to everybody, so you're fine. When I was trying to talk to her something about, when I was trying to talk to her about something that was very, very serious. And after that, I just kind of noped out of that therapy and stopped going for a while. And then again, things got worse. And that's a pattern. I need to be in therapy because if I'm not in therapy, or at least don't go periodically to check in, to brush up on my coping skills, to talk about the things that are bothering me, then I relapse. I go back into these terrible, awful thoughts and these urges, and sometimes even making really dumb decisions when it comes to harming myself. So I need to be in therapy, and I know that, but I stopped going because I felt like this therapist was not supporting me. She wasn't supporting me. She wasn't believing me. And a lot of that has to do with the psychotic episode. And a lot of that has to do with her reaction to a diagnosis that I got while in the hospital. That's next video, I believe. But we didn't get along. And I, like I said, I noped the hell out. And it was months before I would go get help again. Things got really bad for my mental health. So bad that Jake ended up leaving. And I know that wasn't the whole reason, but it was definitely a big part of it because I wasn't taking care of myself and he wasn't happy. And how can he be happy when he's only trying to make me happy, but I'm so depressed and telling him I want to die every day. Like it was a miserable, miserable experience for all of us. And once he left, I kind of kicked my butt into gear. I realized that I was on my own. And that I could either sit with all of these thoughts telling me that he left me because I'm worthless, that he left me because I'm not good enough, that he's gone because I pushed him away because I did something wrong. All of those thoughts, I couldn't deal with it anymore because it was only me. I couldn't push it off on anybody else. I couldn't pick a fight with Jake to get my mind off of things. I couldn't displace any of those thoughts. I couldn't displace any of those emotions. It was just me. And I had to figure it out. So I went back to therapy and I found a new place with a therapist that I absolutely love and adore. And if I was still back home, I would still be going to her. At that practice, they also had nurse practitioners that 
could prescribe psychiatric medication. So not only was I able to go to this therapist who I loved and adored, in the same practice, I was able to go and get my medications. For the most part, my medications are pretty steady. I mean, when I got diagnosed with ADHD, we added a med for that. Sometimes I need an extra antidepressant or I need to up my dosage of antidepressants to help me get through the winter months because I deal with seasonal depression as well. I deal with these thoughts and these feelings getting worse during the winter. So sometimes during the winter, they would up my dose or give me another medication to try to help. But really, I felt like for the first time, I had a therapist and a psychiatrist that were working together that were helping me and I was moving along. And Jake came back into my life and he saw all the work that I had done on myself and he obviously realized he made a mistake by leaving me because I'm great. But we figured things out and we got back together because we were able to take that time to work on ourselves. And honestly, I don't think I really would have gone back to therapy and done the work I needed to if he hadn't left me. Because when he's there, I can put it off on him. I can fight with him. I could have him distract me. But when it's just me stuck with my thoughts, yeah, I needed to go to therapy. I was really, really upset when I left that practice. And it was a little bit before I was able to find a practice down south where I moved. And once I did find a practice, I was really happy. And now I am seeing a therapist. Again, they have nurse practitioners at this practice as well. Well, they have one and she is great. I love her and I go to her for all my medication appointments. My meds are mostly the same as they were when I was back home, but meds do change sometimes. And that's why I have to go to my med appointments to always make sure that things are working the way that they should. So here I am at 26, I go to therapy once a week. I deal with depressive symptoms probably every day. It's gotten a lot worse since the pandemic, even worse since I've gotten injured and can't really do much. The fact that I have sat here this whole time without screaming in pain, I'm surprised, I'm proud of myself. So I'm struggling a lot, but I have the support and I have the coping skills that I need to try to deal with it. To this day, and I believe this will be true for the rest of my life, I still deal with thoughts of harming myself and thoughts of ending it all. And it's gotten to the point where I believe, like I said, I will never not feel this way or never not have a day where I think about those things. Really to me, it's more about acknowledging that those thoughts are there and just letting them pass. So I don't think that I will ever come to a day that I don't think of ending it or that I will come to a place where I never have urges to hurt myself again. That's not realistic to me. I mentioned earlier, it may have been in the other video, but self-harm is almost an addiction. It's a behavioral ritualistic addiction and it's hard to break. And just like anybody who's addicted to a substance, and I'm not saying they're the same thing because they're very different, but they're addicts for the rest of their lives. And I see myself the same way in that I will want to do this thing for the rest of my life. I will have these urges, but it is up to me to be strong enough to not give in to those urges and to do what I need to do to take care of myself. So that way I'm not falling back on these terrible coping skills. The reason I have those urges is because it used to work. It's what I did to help myself feel better. And now that I have better ways to help myself feel better, I can acknowledge those urges and then divert my attention to those better ways. I have better, healthier coping skills. I can journal, I can color, I can hang out with the dogs, I can talk to my husband, I can talk to my therapist. I don't need to hurt myself. I still struggle a lot with feelings of guilt and feelings of worthlessness and feelings of, if I weren't here, it would not matter. But I know that I am worth more than that. I mean, if you can tell, I have a tattoo literally on my arm. I'm worth it. I am worth more than that. I am worth more than what I give myself credit for. I am worth more than harming myself. I deserve better. So that's kind of where I'm at in my journey right now. I'm working on it. I'm struggling. I live with these thoughts, but I also have my coping skills. And I have an incredible, incredible support system. I have great friends. I have an amazing husband. My dogs are the loves of my life. 
which if you hear either of them running around, I'm sorry they're in here while I'm filming because Jake is working right now. I know that in general, I was dealt a pretty rough hand. Uh, mental illness, physical illness, relationship problems, abusive relationships in my past. It's been rough. But I also feel really lucky now that I'm strong enough to sit here and say, yes, I went through all of that, but I'm not gonna do it anymore. Or yes, I went through all of that, but see all these amazing people around me that still love and support me. So I need to keep loving and supporting myself. I feel lucky. I am getting the help that I need and a lot of people aren't able to do that. I said this in my last video, but I will say it again. If you or any of your loved ones believe that they are dealing with this disorder, please go and get help. It is very easy to let yourself wallow in these thoughts and let yourself believe that you are actually feeling this way because you're an awful, terrible human being, because that's what depression tells you. You're not awful. You're not terrible. You are amazing and you deserve better. You deserve help. You deserve to get better. You deserve a happier life. I'm not going to sit here and say that if you go and get help, you'll never deal with depression again, but you'll learn to live with it and you'll learn to actually live. And that's a really important part because depression just sucks all the life out of you. And I see it as an act of defiance almost against that depression to say, no, screw you. I'm going to live my life. And I want that for all of you guys too. Thank you guys so much for watching until the end of this video. I hope that this story was able to reach whoever needed it at this time. I promise you, if you're feeling this way, you're not alone and it can get better. Please reach out to me if I can do anything to help. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you smash that like button for me. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. Click subscribe, ring the notification bell. I upload two videos a week right now, so you don't want to miss any of them. Ring the notification bell and it'll tell you every single time the video is uploaded. I'm pointing to places and I can't even tell you where they'll actually be. So like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, comments, and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.